Hello, you. That sounds so weird. And before we get into our juicy story today, what a guy he is. Uh, I'd like to let you know that this old video is sponsored by Hunt a Killer. It's January, you know, pretty lame time of year. We're all staying in anyway. So to that end, I would recommend staying in with the game Hunt a Killer. Hunt a Killer is the murder mystery subscription box where you solve a fictional crime. This season on a small New England island, a death is declared an accident. Was it though? Well, that's where you, either alone or with friends, and a few scoops, come on, investigate Mallory Rock and its secrets. You get sent a new box every month filled with case information. I'm talking documents, recordings, evidence, and from there you have to solve the puzzles, follow the clues, eliminate who didn't do it to find out who did. If that sounds like your cup of tea, please check out huntakiller.com slash that chapter and use code CHAPTER for a $10 discount. Part of the proceeds for every box go to the Cold Case Foundation, an organization that is dedicated to helping with real-life cold cases. It's good crack, you know, for hanging out at home alone or with friends. So if that sounds like your cup of tea, please check out huntakiller.com slash that chapter and use code CHAPTER for a $10 discount. And with that, let's, uh... Hey you, and welcome. My name is Mike, and in this old video, we're, we're talking about a guy, a guy named Eyebrows. Well, not really, but you know what I mean. I'll show you what I mean is what I mean. In California, Winky over here, former Air Force pilot, possible samurai, though he thought, you know, he thought a lot of things, but he thought he could get away with a whole lot, right? More than anybody ever thought, to be fair. He was wrong. Let's give it a go. So to begin, we gotta start with the where. It's a don't blame me, it's not my fault. This is just the way stories are meant to be told. I've been told. We're going to Napa Valley in California. You got your wine, you got... End of list. All right, it's near San Francisco, Northern California. If you're making wine, you're probably making some skadoosh, so good for them. Looks beautiful, I mean, come on, what else do I gotta yap away about? I feel like this stock footage does the trick. Anyway, it's not Napa Valley we need to, you know, spout on about, it's the people who lived there. Well, namely, it's the Winklers, my friends. Hatfields first. <music> namely, one Rachel Winkler, Hatfield Winkler to be correct. Rachel, in the year 2012, was 37 years old, mother to three small children, Eva, Ariel, and Alex. She was the daughter of painter Don Hatfield, a very well-respected painter in the Napa area. He does some uh, beautiful work. I mean, I know as little about art as I do art critique, but it, it looks friggin' awesome. She was a local to the area. She attended school, you know, high school and all that in Napa. She grew up with three brothers and got herself one of them degrees. Business, to be sure, and she helped small companies in the valley with her degrees expertise. But, like her father, she also loved to paint and was talented in her own right. Most recently, again, 2012 being most recently, she worked as the general manager of the Cameron Park Airport District, a small airport on the other side of Sacramento. Rachel, she had a number of relationships, you know, throughout her life. One to an artist, lasting 14 years, but then... One day she met, you know, the Wink Man. That's Todd, Todd uh, Winkler. So, uh, what do we know about this spookle? Well, get a load of this. He used to be a pilot for the Air Force. He flew F-16s. I mean, that's pretty cool. But those days were behind him now. And he had entered the corporate world. He had changed the yoke, not the way I usually use it, the literal yoke, for a pencil. And he was now a pharmaceutical big dog. Rachel and Todd became engaged. Uh, very, very quick. Startlingly quick, some might say. I mean, uh, I would for two months. Probably haven't even, like, farted in front of each other yet. Rachel, though, at this point in her life, she's getting ready to settle down, you know. Nice house, the kids, the white picket fence, the whole life, you know. Todd, he was steady, he was driven, he had money, he could provide. And he was a good couple of years older than her. Rachel went from small little houses eking out a living to a neighborhood that literally had planes in driveways. 
a neighborhood where Todd was well liked. He was brotastic, and he just generally seemed like a pretty decent guy. What's not to like? A shitload it, uh, turns out. Surprisingly, it turns out that marrying someone you barely know, it's not the graviest of idea because you know what's yours becomes ours, and hey, I like your credit cards. And Todd thought, you know, you could never have enough planes, right? Boats? Lash few them in there. Todd liked to live on big feet. He was generous. To Rachel's dad, Don, to be sure. But maybe sometimes you, you'd rather be generous with what's yours, not with someone else's. And Todd was sure as shit generous with what was Rachel's. Time went on. Todd and Rachel would have one, then two, finally three children together. Rachel worked at the small airport, Todd in the Bay Area, spending the weekends back in Napa. This seems like a nice story, let's see what happens next. Well, you can probably tell where this is going. Rachel met another lad, a guy named James, former Marine, now handyman at the airport, and um, <clears throat> well, you know, Rachel and James would be together pretty much every day of the week, except for weekends when Todd was back in Napa from San Fran, and things got serious um, startlingly quick. Again, thing is, James was also in an, uh, albeit unhappy, marriage. And so his, working on it, soon to be ex, wife, she discovered the whole, uh, kit and caboodle. And it was a grand old time no more. Because when she learned of it, maybe she made a phone call to your man in San Fran. Todd asked Rachel to end the affair. And she did. She did. For a few days, and then there were, her and James were kind of like, back in cahoots again. It seemed like they really were mad for each other, while Todd, it seemed like he was just a mad scone. He would fake having cancer to get out of work, wanted to fake a car accident so he could sue his own company. He was just always up to no good, uh, he didn't seem like the stand-up ex-military, whatever his neighbours thought of him. And Todd once again learned that Rachel was continuing the affair, he had asked her to stop and she said she had. So then, Todd and Rachel's dad, Don, they went to James the guy she was having an affair with, to confront him and ask him to stop. James said, No, I'm not stopping it. Todd said, Ah, oh, shit. Okay. That confrontation didn't go too swimmingly for Todd. And neither did his next confrontation for anyone. 911, what's your emergency? Good morning, I'm calling to report a fatality. Where did this occur? It's in the Cameron Park Air Park. My understanding it was a domestic Tell me exactly what you, what you heard from your neighbor. What I'm what I'm willing to tell you is that I'm an attorney. I received a call notifying me of the situation. Front step. Sheriff's office, walk towards me. Keep your hands up where I can see them. Stop right there. Turn around. Put your hands on top of your head. Who else is inside the house? There's no one else inside the house, sir. Where are your kids at? My kids are right at the house to your right. Right here? Where's your wife? Yes, sir. My wife is inside the house. You said nobody else was inside, though. My wife is dead. What? What? What happened? She threatened me and, uh, that I hit her and she came out with her first. Did you say she came out with you, you with a pair of scissors? So where, where is your wife? She's in, when you enter the house, you turn to the right, <clears throat> the first bedroom on your right. And you're, you're sure she's dead? I'm positive. How can you be, how, how are you sure? No pulse, no breathing. Okay. You said she came at you with scissors and you hit her? Yeah, I hit her first. Okay. Rachel was filling out the divorce papers on the 26th of February, 2012. And when she got home to fill Todd in on this, well, uh, the next morning, Rachel was dead and Todd was sure of it. The children were across the road, the house was bloody, and Rachel had been stabbed to death. Am I under arrest? Yeah. Okay. Um, you know, standard procedure under these, you know, cases and, uh, you know, it's a lot of complicated issues, as you know well, so it will just have to be figured out. Okay? Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay. 
Todd was arrested and he told the police he did kill Rachel. But it was in self-defense. I said, uh, I'm not going to agree to you having the kids up here and having primary custody. I'm not going to fight you on this. And uh, she said, um, you know, I'm looking to have my boyfriend get rid of you. Um, her boyfriend is a big gun collector. She had told him she was getting a divorce. Then the arguments began about custody, and she had threatened him, he said. She was going to sick ex-Marine James on him if she didn't get her way. His response was to deck her. But it did her right side of the face. After she told you basically she's going to have this, her boyfriend take care of Yeah, yeah. Her response to his response was to grab a scissors. And she told you she's coming at me with a V of scissors. Uh -huh. And I got a hold of them and we had a struggle on the bed and rolled off into the bed and uh -huh. got to do um, this struggle over the scissors. Um, I took some cuts just on my hands trying to get them away from her. It was a long, long, long protracted struggle. Uh -huh. I don't know how long, but it was a long time. She's a very strong girl. Uh -huh. She's an extremely strong girl. Um, and then uh, she had me on bottom, and she was on top of me, and went like, back and forth between bottom and top in this struggle over the scissors. I was able to get him turned around onto her uh -huh. and give her some, some jab. She was... She was... She was injured at this point, but probably not seriously. Uh -huh. I poked her in the eye really hard and got her to break free. They fought. He then had managed to, to run away. And just as he was legging it out of the house, he remembered the kids were still in the house. So he went back in and Rachel pounced. Tripped and fell forward when I rushed into the room. She kicked me in the, in the face. And then we got into uh, another subsequent struggle um, on the floor. And uh, once I, you know, started to get the upper hand, um, I just, I pushed the scissors in as far as I could. And uh, where was that, do you recall? In her throat. Uh -huh. In her throat. I don't know how long, for a long time. Okay, and why did you hold her there like that with the the scissors in? I knew if I let go, I mean, she still had a hand on these scissors. I was also fearing for, you know, she was, it, it was a tell a killer to be killed kind of situation. At that point, you wanted her to die. Mm -hmm. And, and I just, Started just pacing around the house to say, oh, God, I just don't want to live. Then he took the kids across the road to a neighbor's house. And seven hours later, he called a lawyer, a neighbor, and who was a lawyer, who called the police. And so the investigation began. Um, you know, the investigators a little dubious about Todd's claims of self-defense. And that is when the detectives in Todd's house, they found what appeared to be ashes. Ashes of someone Todd had previously been married to. A woman who had, over 2,000 miles away, also died a very suspicious death. In 1999, an accident, <laughs> Winkler, maybe, killed Todd's first wife, Catherine. Catherine had dated Todd for a very short time, much like Rachel, before they got hitched in 1991, and they lived together in Georgia. Todd and Catherine had met when he was a pilot. After they married, he was based in Japan for a while, a member of the Fighting Samurai Squadron. Later, he was sent to Hawaii, where in fact he had a mental breakdown. By 1999, he was out of the Air Force. And that's when, hey, you know, the dot-com era, you know the internet? Gonna be big! Still waiting on that one. And Todd, he decided to get into that. He wanted to be early in on the internet. 
In September 1999, two campers in the Chattahoochee National Forest heard screaming in the middle of the night. A man calling out for help. The man being Todd. He told them of a horrible accident. He and his wife had just driven off a cliff, basically. He was thrown out of the car. His wife was not so lucky. When they followed Todd to the scene of this accident, well, it looked like half the forest was on fire. It was an, uh, an inferno, and it, there was no chance of any survivors. A horrible accident, right? Um, made stranger by the surrounding circumstances, namely Todd. He didn't have a scratch on him. Uh, even though see, he said he had been violent, violently thrown from the truck as it careened off a cliff. He said what happened was that Katrin had been driving, driving fast and dangerous because Todd had been bitten by a bee or a bug or something while they had been camping. And she had then, you know, accidentally, um, well, yeah. Todd seemed, uh, fine though. Not a bother on him, you know, whatever had bit him. It kind of, when he was telling the story, it made it sound like, you know, he was going to, like, anaphylactic shock. Not a bother on him now, though. Hey, the, being thrown off a cliff must have scared the shite out of him. Literally whatever shite the bug had put in him. Catherine was confirmed to have died via smoke inhalation. Her body was burned beyond recognition. It was officially classed an accident, right? And Todd got... Well, you know what he got. 1.2 million dollars in life insurance. So that's then two dead wives and a shitload of raised eyebrows. And prosecutors from California made their way to Georgia to have a goo at what happened to wife number one 15 years after she was done. Going through his numerous statements and finding a lot of discrepancies in his story. How it changed as he was questioned about it again and again and again. When asked what had bitten him, and where it had bitten him, he, he literally had no answer for it. He was like, yeah, somewhere in the general body area. Don't worry about it. Sometimes he remembered being thrown out of the truck, but not all the time. Sometimes he said he just blacked out and woke up and was like, Jesus. He wore a lot of very thick clothing on a very warm September night in Georgia, as if he was, you know, um, prepared to take a fall and wanted to protect himself. And why did the truck become engulfed uh, in flames? I mean, it can happen when it goes off, but it hit a tree and then this exploded. And I mean, I don't know much about cars, but I do know car manufacturers do not like being sued. So it's actually very rare that that happens. And it looked like the fire had been on for a long time before Todd alerted people to the fact that there even was a fire. It was an odd place to be driving that late at night, from where Todd said they had been camping. But where Todd said they had been camping, no one really camps there, and Catherine did not like camping regardless. They quickly came to the conclusion that he was lying about whatever happened in Georgia. Now, what did happen in Georgia, well, right, it is still, it is still down as an accident. Todd has never been charged in relation to Anne that happened to Catherine. But, but you can be sure as shit that that came up during his murder trial. The prosecutor successfully argued that evidence from the death of Katrin Winkler could be brought up when Todd was on trial for murder, which took place in 2014. Defendant has now had two dead wives, and in both cases, he's the only witness, and his stories change, and he comes up with injuries after the fact. This is not a murder case, ladies and gentlemen. This is a self-defense case, or at most, It's a voluntary manslaughter case. During the trial, the defense spent almost as much time defending Todd against what happened to Catherine as they did about what happened to Rachel. Todd and Catherine were seen by a ranger camping, who said, you know, they, they seemed happy while they were camping out. Catherine, it had nothing, nothing to do with Rachel. This is, why even bring it up? It was voluntary manslaughter what happened to Rachel at worst. Todd had been unstable before. He had a breakdown in Hawaii, so, you know, Something happened there. The doctors diagnosed him with disassociative disorder before, which that's the reason he left the Air Force on medical grounds. The prosecution portrayed Todd as a mastermind murderer who had killed before and would do it again. Though as the prosecutor was telling the story about 
What happened to Katrin? This happened. She's found burned to death down a steep embankment where the car went. The car and she burned, and the defendant is very fine with just a few minor scratches on him. You are not samurai! Stop! Stop. You do not speak Stop. truth! Stop. You only want to destroy! Stop. You are no Bushido! You are no Bushido! Right. That's kind of a thing that happened. Stop. 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 As I was saying... Kind of funny. Kind of disturbing. But, but remember, right? Todd had faked shit before. He'd faked having cancer. He'd, faked, he'd wanted to fake car accidents to get out of work. Very hard to tell what's going on with that lad. The defendant's former wife, Kathy Winkler, went on a camping trip back on September 26th of 1999 with this defendant. She died in a fiery crash. The only witness to the crime was, in fact, this defendant. The prosecution argued, eyebrows hadn't fought with Rachel. He had just straight up murdered her while she was defenseless. He had stabbed at her with the scissors. At one point, he thought she was dead, and he walked away to start messing up the house. But she wasn't. She actually got up and went to hold her baby. And then he attacked her again. Then he messed up the house, made it look like he had been attacked himself, and the neighbors would testify that, remember, before he called his neighbor who called the cops, he dropped his kids off across the road. Those neighbors said that when he dropped the kids off, he had no marks or cuts on him then. The marks and cuts on him were extremely superficial too. I took some cuts just on my hands trying to get them away from her. It was a long, long, long protracted struggle. It's like you want to make it look, look, you know, um, like you had been attacked, but you're like, no, 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 it's kind of sore, I don't really want to do that. The motive was the divorce, uh, and that Rachel believed Todd had been responsible for Catherine's death, and that if she, he had told her if she was going to leave him, she would the same thing would happen to her. She was right. When it went to the jury, they found Todd Winkler guilty of first-degree murder. We, the jury, impaneled in the above entitled action, find the defendant Todd Allen Winkler guilty of the crime of first degree murder. Todd was sentenced to 26 years to life. I, I, I will just say, Your Honor, that I feel um, deep remorse for what's happened and um, for Rachel's family, for my family, and especially for my children. Todd appealed, saying that evidence from the death, accidental death, of Catherine Winkler should not have been allowed during the trial. But in 2020, any basis on this appeal uh, was denied. And so ends the story of Winky Todd. His outbursts were very uh, odd. What happened to two of his wives was even odder. Honestly, I could have made an entire video about the mysterious end of his first wife, and the whole story about being thrown from the truck it's interesting. I'll give it that. He seems like a guy who would have a lot of interesting stories. None of them true! So, hey. So ends the story of eyebrows. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, I really appreciate you taking the time to be here with me, watching this whole video. Alright, uh, that about wraps it up, so here, go on. I'll see you as always real soon in the next whole video. Until then, please, remember, take care of yourselves, because, um, you know, my game.